Hi, I'm Garrick DeMeyer from Royal Constrictor Designs. Uh, the 2016 hatching season is here now. It's uh, June and we're just starting to hatch some babies out so I figured I would show a few of them. And then I've also got a couple of uh, interesting clutches here that I want to cut open too. So I decided to do that on camera. Uh, first clutch that hatched out was a Pastel Lesser Hat Clown to Pastel Hat Clown. And these haven't shed yet so they're not looking their best. Um, I didn't want to wait any longer to get a video out. I know a lot of people have been wondering when I was going to make another video. So um, I'm going to take a lot more post-shed videos coming up over throughout the season. But just wanted to get a quick one up there just to give some everybody something to look at. So that's a killer clown male. And then there's a bunch of uh, possible het clowns. Super pastel lesser possible het clowns. Regular pastel lesser possible hat clowns. Really didn't hit great odds in this clutch. Um, should have been one out of every four babies should have shown clown. And we only got one in the entire clutch out of one, two, three, four, five, out of seven. One out of seven. So we should have probably had closer to, to two um, clowns in that clutch. But either way, still pretty happy with getting killer clown out of that. Okay, the next clutch that I hatched out was a killer bee to normal clutch. I'm sorry, killer queen bee to normal. So spider, pastel, or I'm sorry, spider, super pastel, and lesser. And it's got a queen bee here. And again, these guys haven't shed yet, so they're definitely not looking their best. A couple of queen bees. Now because this is a killer queen bee that produced this, every baby's going to have pastel in it. So it takes one of the, the possibilities out of the equation. You know pastel is going to be in all the babies. Um, here's a little bumblebee that hatched in the clutch too. Never have too many bumblebees. Those are really popular. And then some pastel lessers. And it looks like there's a regular pastel in there too. Not a super valuable clutch or a genetically a really super interesting clutch, but popular snakes nonetheless. Uh, queen bees are always really good sellers. They're really cool looking and a lot of people seem to like those. Okay, now we move on to some more interesting clutches. This clutch is from a calico yellow belly banana, the one that I featured on Facebook and I think in a couple of videos in the past. Uh, so a calico yellow belly banana bred to a lesser bee. Um, here is, I believe that this is a yellow belly lesser bee. Got really strong blushing on the sides. Pretty sure that that's a yellow belly. So yellow belly lesser bee. Here's the same thing, but with banana mixed in. Now, banana and lesser doesn't result in a purple snake. They have a really cool color, and their colors actually really increase as they get older. The banana lesser stuff and coral glow lessers are awesome looking when they're older. They don't get any black spots in them at all and they just have a really cool color. When they're babies it's actually hard to tell whether or not there's even banana in there. But there definitely is with this. And I think this one's a yellow belly too. Um, it's a little hard to tell for sure but some nice blushing on the sides there. Fairly busy pattern. At very worst, he's a spider, banana, lesser. Okay, then here is... I'm not 100% sure what this is. This may be a calico, lesser banana. It's not a pastel because the head color, or actually there's an pastel in this possibility so yeah, I guess not. Um, 
but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a lesser, it's definitely a banana, and I've produced a lot of lesser bananas in the past, and haven't really seen one with this kind of blushing coming out. I'm pretty sure that this is a relatively low expression calico. We'll see what becomes of him as he sheds and gets a little bit bigger. Okay, the next one, uh, this one is a calico banana, and he's also a possible yellow belly. He doesn't look like the father, but I think the father was just a really exceptional animal. Um, this guy's awesome too, but I'm just not 100% sure if he has yellow belly. But his purples are really strong. His pattern is pretty blushed out on the sides. Lots of whites in there. Definitely a good example of a calico. I just don't know for sure if there's yellow belly in there or not. All of these will be for sale, by the way, too. So if you're interested in them, message me. Um, either, well, probably email is the best way to get a hold of me through my website. Can't wait till this guy sheds. Banana and calico and sugar and jeans like that are just so cool together. Then we have this one right here is the one that's really throwing me off. Um, this looks like an orange dream fire. I'm pretty certain that that's what it is, but the only other male that I recorded breeding with that lesser bee female is an Orange Dream Enchi pinstripe. Um, I don't really see Enchi in this, and I, you know, there's definitely not pinstripe in it, um, but it looks like a pretty typical Orange Dream fire. So I may have slipped in something else in there too. Um, I've got a. Um, uh, orange dream fire yellow belly male that I've been breeding to a few females. Maybe I put him in there once. I don't remember doing it, but there's definitely a possibility. But either way, this has got almost has to be a, a multi sired clutch, with this one being the only one from a different male. And the other thing is, this one I believe, I think, is a male too. Yeah, this one's definitely a male, which makes me think that the, well, the banana calico yellow belly couldn't have fathered it, or very unlikely to, because uh, he's a male maker. So this guy shouldn't be a male if he's, if the calico yellow belly banana is the father. So, I don't know, we'll have to raise this guy up a little bit and see what happens with him. Okay, now, I got another really nice clutch here. This clutch was produced from breeding a uh, coral glow het pied to a black pastel pied. And as you can see here, here's a really nice black pastel pied. They tend to be very high white. Not all of them are you know, nearly solid white with dark heads like this, but a lot of them are. Probably about a quarter of the baby's black pastel pieds that have hatched out have looked similar to this or even with more white than this one. This is a female. A little bit of pattern down here and on the head and neck. Okay then here is a pied and this one's a male which is another interesting thing because the Coral Glow Het Pied male that I use is a male maker. So I don't really know how this one could have been a male. This is another one where I may have used a different male too. I know I swapped some males around a little bit. Um, it's possible this is a fire pied. It looks kind of like a yellow belly pied, but I don't have a yellow belly pied male. Um, so there's no way that, that a yellow belly pied could have fathered the clutch. Or at least even this, this uh, one baby. So it almost have to be a fire pie because I do have a fire pied male, but the head doesn't the head color doesn't quite look right. I don't think um, it just may be a really, really, really nicely colored pied.
And then we have two coral glow pies. I don't think either one of these are black pastel. Black pastels are usually higher white. And they also, I would expect the color to be more uniformly, probably dark orange on a black pastel pied. Look at this guy. And this one also, this guy right here seems to have the same general pattern scheme and, and color as the other pied in there, the possible fire pied. So I don't know, there might be just something kind of weird going on with the, with either the coral glow hat pied male or the female uh, black pastel pied that produce these. Either way, they're pretty awesome. I love coral glow pieds. These guys should be stunning by the time they shed lots of oranges in them. I've hatched a few coral glow pieds in the past and it's crazy because every one is very different from another. Some have more purple, some have more orange, some are a little bit yellower. Uh, really, really vary a lot from individual to individual. Okay, now on to cutting a couple of clutches. Let's do this one first. This one won't be really that much to look at, but it's a cool clutch for me. It's from a toffee male bred to a champagne. So I should be able to get some champagnes that are het for toffee. Uh, this is how I incubate my eggs. A container, a couple of very tiny holes in the sides. Uh, just to provide a little bit of air exchange. They don't need much. Uh, vermiculite in the bottom, uh, completely drenched down, a piece of light diffuser on top, the eggs go in there. I make sure that the eggs don't touch the sides or the top, otherwise if you get water condensation and the eggs are touching that, it'll wick right to the eggs and probably drown the embryo inside. So I just make sure they're sitting right in the middle without touching anything. Okay, let's see if we got any champagne hat toffees in here. Looks like one. There we go. Not much to see when they're still in the egg, but still a pretty cool thing for me. So we got one champagne hat toffee. Make that two. I think I'd like to keep a pair of these. I'm open to the idea of selling any additional ones. I think there's so much to do with the toffee gene. It's the best example of a purple snake, or purple pattern snake anyway. Huh, here's another one. These will probably be out of the eggs in, I don't know, probably in four or five days from now. They'll be completely out, and then I can figure out what the sexes are. It's another one. It's so strange how you just crush the odds in some clutches and you get horrible odds in others. That clown clutch that I showed you before, I had bad odds in that clutch, and this clutch is coming out unbelievable. So, you win some, you lose some. There's another one. There should have been, uh, each egg has a 50-50 chance of being a champagne. And I got five eggs and hit on five champagnes. It's like flipping a coin five times and landing on heads each time. Not a bad clutch. So I will have some champagne hat toffees for sale at some point in the very near future. Now, this is the clutch I was really looking forward to. I did this one a couple times last year and had awesome results. Uh, banana hat genetic stripe bred to a cinnamon stripe. So we're looking at more cinnamon banana genetic stripes in here. And before I even start cutting, there's a cinnamon banana stripe poking his head out of the egg. The reason why I can tell it's a cinnamon is because the, the head color is a little bit more purplish, a little different than uh, what a regular banana genetic stripe looks like. So I can get him back in there so I can get at his shell. I don't want to cut him. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's strange. That one actually looks a little different than most of them that I hatch. You can really see a lot of orange. I mean, it's got very bold, bold purple around there, but a lot more orange. Most of the time, or the last year's cinnamon genetic stripe uh, bananas hatched, and they were all like kind of a burnt orange color. You couldn't really see any striping on them. So it's possible I'm wrong about this, and he's just a very high colored, regular genetic stripe banana, but uh, I don't know. Either way, he's a cool looking snake from what I can see. Let's see what else we can find in this clutch. I've got a lot of cinnamon genetic stripes that have laid this year. Probably, I don't know, eight or nine of them, I think. Somewhere on there. That's probably a regular banana genetic stripe. So I didn't just breed all of my cinnamon stripes to banana het stripe. I, I did some other stuff, some stuff with Orange Dream too. So I should have some really cool Orange Dream genetic stripe combos this year. Uh, it's uh, just a normal pet genetic stripe. I think genetic stripe is a very underrated morph. It's just such a cool pattern, and the colors are always really nice with them. I'm a little surprised they don't that they're not actually more popular than than they are. But I like them a lot, so I'm going to keep producing them. There's a cinnamon genetic stripe. So actually, that first one was just a regular banana stripe. This one's a cinnamon because they hatch out. They're basically patternless, and then after they're after they shed, they start getting their pattern in them. But when they first hatch, or when they first, you know, when I first cut the eggs open, they're pretty patternless looking. There's a regular cinnamon genetic stripe. They're kind of like a patternless, kind of charcoal gray looking when they first hatch. Sometimes you can see a faint stripe going down their back, but a lot of times, like as adults, you can't even really see the striping on the, on them anymore. They're, they kind of look a little bit like a super cinnamon, actually. This looks like a banana. Actually, this looks like a cinnamon banana pet genetic stripe. Yeah, it looks like probably another cinnamon banana pet genetic stripe. Maybe just a regular banana. Some of these are so hard to tell when they're in the egg. I have to wait until they come out to really know for sure. I think that's cinnamon though. So yeah, that's it so far for this year. I will have a lot more hatching. I'll be doing a lot of videos this year. Got a lot in this incubator, got a lot in that incubator. I've even got a third incubator that's filling up pretty quickly. So um, I'll be trying to do a lot of videos. Uh, I'll do some more uh, cutting videos when I've got any really unique, exciting clutches to cut. Um, I'll be doing a lot of post-shed videos too, so you can see what their colors really look like a little bit better anyway. And um, if you're interested in purchasing any of these or anything else, uh, just make sure to check my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. And also make sure to like me on Facebook. I've got uh, like royalconstrictordesigns.com on Facebook, I should say because I post a lot of stuff there first. Like I'll just take a quick picture of it and put it on there. I usually don't have time to do as many YouTube videos as I would like, but I promise more are coming this year. So uh, stay tuned and uh, have a good hatching season.